In this video, we discuss analytic model fitting and in particular, a few methods to judge the fitness of a model. We will discuss three different criteria, starting with the most intuitive one and ending with the one that is most widely used in practice. The goodness of a fit measures how far a model is from a dataset. Let's say that we have a dataset and the model and there will be of course some deviations of our model from the data points the most intuitive way to think about minimizing these deviations is to simply minimize the largest deviation which in our case is this one with the idea that if the largest deviation is made small then all other deviations will of course also be small. This is what's called the Chebyshev approximation, our first criterion for the goodness of a fit. We aim in this case to find the parameter values that, mi that minimize the largest deviation of the model from the data points. Let's take an example. We are given a segment AC and a point B on segment AC. And we are also given the measurements of the segments AC, AB and BC. And let's say that AC is 19, AB is 13 and BC is 7. There is obviously something wrong here and so our problem is to find the values for the length of each segment that gives the best fitting using the Chebyshev criterion. So let's denote the length of AB with x1 and the length of BC with x2 and obviously the length of AC is going to be x1 plus x2. The deviations of the model from the data points are R1 is the difference between the real value of this segment and the data point, which is in our case 13. So it's x1 minus 13. The other deviation is x2 minus the data we have for this segment, which is 7. And R3 is x1 plus x2 minus 19. And so we need to minimize the largest of these deviations and that's the same as find the smallest r such that all of these values r1, r2 and r3 are smaller or equal than r and they are so even in module. And so this is the same as saying um, minus uh, R1 is in between minus R and R and um, R2 is in between minus R and R and the same for R3. And so this can be now rewritten as follows r minus x1 plus 13 is greater than or equal to 0 r plus x1 minus 13 is greater than or equal to 0 r minus x2 plus 7 greater than or equal to 0 r plus x2 minus 7 greater than or equal to 0 r minus x1 minus x2 plus 19 greater than or equal to 0 
and r plus x1 plus x2 minus 19 greater than or equal to 0. And this is of course a well-known type of problem which is called linear programming. And there are standard solutions and software um, for solving such problems. As intuitive as this method is, it's in fact not quite practical. For example, it becomes pretty difficult to solve when the optimization problem is not linear. For example, if we want to fit a model something like sinus of k times x. For this reason, it's not much used in practice, but it's still educational to discuss it in this video because it shows why we need to consider more sophisticated criteria. Here is the second criterion that we will discuss for the goodness of a fit, to minimize the sum of the absolute deviations between the model and the data points. This can be formalized as follows. Given a data set xy and a model, um, and k being the vector of parameters to be fit, we have to select those parameter values which are going to minimize all these sums module between y and f of x. In other words, a module of the difference between the data set and the prediction of the model. In principle, such a problem will be solved in practice by differentiating this sum with respect to each parameter, because those are the points where the sum is going to be minimized. One has to be careful because the modules in this sum will make the derivatives discontinuous in the points where the modules are equal to zero. This can often be problematic in practice and can lead to extra complications in solving the problem. For the example that we use in this video, um, where we have a segment, hey C, um, and uh, a point in between and we are given some data for the length of this segment as being 13 for this segment and 7 for this segment and uh, 19 for the total segment. Using this criterion we will have to solve the following problem. Find x1 and x2 both of them greater than or equal to 0 such that the module of x1 minus 13 plus the module of x2 minus 7 plus the module of x1 plus x2 minus 19 is minimal. We discuss now the fitness criterion that is most widely used in practice, least squares. It's closely related to minimizing the sum of the absolute deviations, but it removes the problem that the derivatives might not be everywhere continuous. It can be formulated as follows. Given a data set xy and a model of the form y equals some function f with parameters k and a function of variables x, we have to select those parameter values which minimize the sum of y minus f of x squared. For the example we use in this video, the problem to solve becomes in this case, this was the segment AC and uh, the point B in between and this was given to be 13 and this was 7 and the overall length 19. So we have to solve the following problem find x1, x2 such that x1 minus 13 squared plus x2 minus 7 squared plus x1 plus x2 minus 19 squared is minimal. Now we can solve the problem by differentiating, uh, and we think about partial derivatives here, with respect to the two parameters x1 and x2. 
So if I write the first partial derivative with, with respect to x1, this is the same as thinking about this expression here as being an expression just in just x1. So what I will get is 2 times x1 minus 13, which is the partial derivative of this first expression, plus there is nothing left of this second expression because it doesn't contain x1. But I get something from this expression, and that is 2 times x1 plus x2 minus 19, and that has to be equal to 0. And I do the same for the second variable. I calculate the partial derivative of this expression with respect to x2, and I will get in a similar way 2 times x2 minus 7 plus 2 times x1 plus x2 minus 19 equal to 0. And so we solve this system of equations, and uh, this can be rewritten as 2x1 plus x2 equals 32, and um, x1 plus 2x2 equals 26. And the solution can be seen to be x1 equals 12 plus 2 thirds, and uh, x2 is x plus 2 thirds, and the length of the segment AC, x1 plus x2, is simply 19 plus 1 over th th 3. So we discussed in this video three different criteria for how to judge the goodness of a fit and for how to select the model best fitting a given data set. We started with the most intuitive one, where the focus was on minimizing the largest deviation of the model. In other words, a special focus was on the worst outlier point. Then we discussed another intuitive criterion, where the focus was on minimizing the sum of all deviations of the model. In this case, we treated each data point equally and tended to average the deviations. Finally, we discussed the most practical criterion because of the easiness to apply standard calculus in this case, which is somewhat in between. All deviations are considered, but larger deviations will contribute more to fitness score, and so the aim will be to minimize them more than others. Notions of fit quality have been proposed in many different forms, and they are very useful in practice. The idea is to be able to give a numerical measure for how good a fit is. That can be used to compare the fitting of two different models to the same data set, and even the fitting of two models to two different data sets. Here is just one example of such a measure of fit quality, coming from a paper by Kunel et al. in BMC Systems Biology, published in 2008. Many others exist, but I chose to highlight this one because this particular measure discriminates less against models that are fit on data points with large absolute values. It gives a measure of the average deviation of the model normalized by the average. The formula for it is the quality of a model with respect to some given data is something like this. Um, it's going to be here some square root of the sum of squared deviations, meaning to say deviations of the model from the data set. And we divide this to the number of data points. And this we divide to the mean of predicted values. And that's going to be a percentage. A rule of thumb is that a good fit can be considered one that has a fit quality lower than 20%. So um, this is just a rule of thumb. A good fit, maybe it's something that has this quality measure um, at most 